In this video I'll show you how to paint a small army that looks great in only 10 hours, all without an airbrush. I'll rip up the rule book and use contrast paint on a tank and I'll also show you how to save a complete varnish disaster. You can use these techniques on any army to get it on the tabletop fast, so let's get painting. I've assembled one half of the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness box, I'm going to paint these as Imperial Fists just like the box art. So the first thing I do is take a massive shortcut and use Sunset Yellow Spray from Colourforge to prime and base the models all at once. This yellow spray is great because it's an exact match for Avalanche Sunset, which means we can go in and fix any mistakes we make as part of the painting process. We need to start blocking all the base colours now, and the colour I'm going to use for this is black from Vallejo Model Colour. This covers fantastically well, even when it's thinned down, so it really does speed things up. Whereas something like a bad and black, it's going to take you a little bit of time, you're going to need to use two coats, but you can get away with one using this colour. And in terms of what I'm aiming for, I'm just following the box art and I'm painting all those things like backpacks, the under shoulder pads, the knee pads on the Terminators. Next up, I'm going to paint all of the leather elements, and the colour I'm going to use for this is Wildwood Contrast Paint, and this is really good because it'll get into those recesses, and because of the yellow colour underneath, it'll give it a nice, warm, automatic highlight. And, best of all, it's really, really quick. Just take your time, try not to spill any, and get all those leather elements painted. Moving on to the metallics next, the silver ones in particular. Again, I want something that covers really well, so I'm going for Dark Silver from Pro Acryl. Now take your time with this, try not to get it on those yellow or black or leather parts, but this will cover really well in just one coat. There's lots of other paints you can use, such as the metal colour range, but again it just covers a little bit better, so it gives you that extra speed built in in the coverage. Next up, we're really going to punch up the value in that yellow by adding some Yandan Yellow Contrast Paint all over the yellow areas. Before you do this, fix any mistakes using Avalanche Sunset. And yes, we're going to break the rules a bit here and use this contrast paint on a tank, namely the Spartan. As you can see from the video, it's really important you keep that paint moving across the model to get a really nice smooth coverage. If you're not confident doing this, then you can use it thinned down with contrast medium, probably about 50-50, and then you'll have to do maybe two or three coats to get that punchy coverage. It's really important at this stage as well to make sure you do one panel at a time and make sure that you keep moving and don't let it dry and go back to it because you'll get tide marks. So keep that paint moving one panel at a time. Next up we're going to varnish all of the miniatures and I'm going to use Mecha Gloss Varnish from Vallejo because I really like the effect you get with this. I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of water so it covers nicely and essentially all I'm going to do is paint all of the miniatures with this gloss coat because that will homogenise all of the different paint types that we've got on there. It'll also provide us a nice level surface for adding decals before we go in and add some more depth. Once that's dry, we're going to go in and just do some of the red elements using Blood Angel's red contrast paint. So I'm going to paint the plume of the Praetor, and I'm also going to paint his cloak as well. Now, because this is going over a yellow base, what you'll find is that the end result is a little bit lighter, but again, similar to the leather, it'll give you that nice automatic highlight. So just paint it all in into the recesses. Don't let it pull too heavily. So if you need to soak some up with your brush, make sure you do. Using some Retributor armour, we'll paint some of the gold accent colours such as sword hills and a lot of the decoration that the Praetor's got on his armour. If you're not sure what you need to paint this colour, then just follow my video or have a look at the box art. Or if you find something that you think will look better in gold, then by all means go ahead and do that. There are a few cloth elements on the models, such as the banner and the vexilla, so you can paint this using Rakarth flesh, and there's also some scroll work on the Spartan, I'm going to base this colour as well. The absolute best product I've found for decals is Tamiya Mark Fit Strong. If you've ever put a round decal on a shoulder pad, you know what I mean. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of this on the shoulder pad, I'm applying the decal, having dipped it in water. Then I'm going to use a Q-tip or a cotton bread to squeeze what's underneath out. I'm going to let that settle and then I'm going to put some more Mark Fit Strong over the top. I'm then going to use a Q-tip to, again, push out anything underneath and smooth this out. And I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Then once it's dried for about 5-10 minutes, it's starting to take the shape, I'll put some more Mark Fit Strong and again use a cotton bud or a Q-tip just to spread out any creases. And this gives you a nice, perfect round deckle on a Space Marine shoulder pad. Now to add some depth and definition to the model, I'm going to take some burnt umber oil paint and make a wash with it. As you can see, this isn't as thin as the oil washes I normally use, but I'm applying it fairly liberally across all of the models. So we're going to do all the infantry and do the tank exactly the same. Once we've let that set up for a good few minutes, we're then going to clean most of that oil off. So we're going to do it in two different ways. For all of the infantry, I'm going to take a nice big flat brush and I'm going to dip this into some clean white spirit dab it off on a paper towel and then just brush this over the miniature. What this will do is thin that oil out even further, it'll help it speed up drying but it'll also enable you to push it right into the recesses to make sure that you haven't got any of it staining those top surfaces. 
When it comes to the tank, I'm going to do this a little bit differently and I'm going to take a makeup sponge and I'm going to use this to clean off all of the oil on the surface. But again, I'm going to use downward motions so it goes into those recesses and in some places it'll give you some streaks as well so it'll build in some nice weathering and just break up that monotonous yellow surface. So disaster has struck. I left that oil wash dry a little bit and then I wanted to matte everything down so I used Vallejo Mecca matte varnish and unfortunately we have a problem as you can see this is uh, totally messed up it's frosted into all the recesses it's totally altered the color uh, i'm not sure exactly what's gone wrong but we need to fix this somehow so let's not wallow too much what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that gloss varnish and we're going to paint that gloss varnish all over the models again and we're going to make sure that it settles into the recesses and it covers off any of those white areas once that gloss varnish is dry, you can see that it has fixed the majority of the issues. There are some parts on the spot and I had to repaint the black because it hadn't quite fixed it perfectly. But actually, this is like mission saved because this was a total disaster and it's all right. It's turned out fine. I still want a matte effect, so I'm cracking out the big guns. It's Tamiya TS-80 spray. This is uh, matte clear. So the vast majority done, it's time to focus on some of the details. So we'll paint the head of the Praetor and we can do this across any other bare skin we've got as well. So I'm going for a Caucasian look on the Praetor and the base I'm using is Kislev Flesh. Once that Kislev Flesh is dry, I'm then going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade and paint this into all of the recesses. When the Reichland Flesh Shade is dry, we'll go back to Kislev Flesh to highlight those raised areas such as the nose and the brow. And then finally, we'll put a highlight of Flayed One Flesh on those highest raised areas. So again, just focusing to give this a little bit of pop. I'll shade the Praetor's beard next and that fantastic moustache. So I'm going to use Space Wolves Grey Contrast Paint and just put a little bit around there. And what this will do will drop into the recesses of that shape and it'll give you some nice definition on the beard. It's time to highlight the beard. And the colour we're going to use for this is Pro Acryl Titanium White. This is a fantastic white paint. It covers amazingly well. And for the beard, what we're looking to do is just paint downward strokes from the top to the bottom. And we're going for a line effect that kind of just give that beard a little bit of texture. We're also going to paint all of the eye lenses on the Space Marines and any targeting lenses on the tank, weapons, etc. Because we'll use contrast paint to paint them as well. For all of the eye lenses on the Marines, we're going to use Talisar Blue Contrast Paint, which is a fantastic colour for this. All you need to do is paint it into those recessed areas. If it looks too blue, clean your brush off and then just soak some of that paint away. And what you'll get is a nice glowing effect in the middle of the eye. For targeting lenses, I'm going to use Blood Angels Red and Warp Lightning Contrast Paint. And again, similar technique to what I did with Talisar Blue is I'm going to paint it on there. And if it's too opaque, I'm just going to soak a little bit up with a brush, leaving the white in the middle to give a nice, easy glow effect. And it's a really quick way of doing all the lenses you need. I'll use Volupa's Pink Contrast Paint to paint all of the grips on the weapons. And again, this is a really easy way of getting the coat done in one hit. Now you can highlight it again if you want, but that's not what we're going for. We're going for speed, we're going for effectiveness, and we're going for something that looks great six foot away on a table. We've got a few details left to do, such as the design on the back of the Praetor's cloak. So I'm gonna make this nice and bright to stand out against the red using Xandri dust to start with. And I'm just painting this inside the lines of that sculpted detail, being careful not to get it on the red. Once the Zandri dust is dry, we need to highlight it, and the colour we're going to use is a Shapti Bone. Again, what I'm looking to do here is paint within the lines of that sculpted part, but I'm only focusing on the raised areas, leaving the Zandri dust in the recesses. Finally, I'm just going to mix a little bit of titanium white into that Shapti Bone, and I'm going to highlight the highest, most raised areas to give a nice pop effect. And this is a really nice way, simple way, of getting a nice looking cloak. The last couple of stages we need to do now before we base the models is just put some rough highlights on there so they do stand out and pop a little bit. So the first thing we're going to use is silver from Pro Acryl. And what we're going to do is use a normal brush, but we're going to use it in a dry brush technique. So make sure it's an old synthetic brush. Wipe most of the paint off and then just drag it along some of those edges to make some of those metallic plates pop a little bit. When it comes to the Spartan, I'm going to use a much bigger dry brush. And what I'm going to do is focus on the edges of the tracks as well as the big silver areas to, again, add a little bit of interest and shininess onto that tank. Finally, focusing on the big black areas on the Spartan, we're going to use a little bit of Mechanica's Standard Grey. And again, we're just going to dry brush this along those edges. Once we've done that a little bit, I'm then going to go back in and just refine the edge using a normal brush. And I'm going to pull this along those sharp edges to add some definition. Again, we're doing this because it's a nice big centerpiece model where we want to add that little bit of extra detail. 
the last thing to do is base the models so what i've done is i've painted all the bases black i've put a little bit of pva glue on them and all i'm going to do now is just pop them in a tray of sand shake them around shake it off wipe the base rim and then pop them there and let that dry once those bases are dry i'm going to take some agrax earth shade and just paint this over all of that sand so it'll darken down it'll start to work its way around using capillary action as well and this will give you a nice dark base effect which contrasts against the bright yellow armor and there we go we've got a great looking force ready for the tabletop and the total paint time was just under 10 hours you'll need to factor in drying time as well which is why it's best to leave things like the oil wash overnight but i'm really happy with how this looks and how fast i've been able to complete this work in about two hours a day and that includes all the filming for this tutorial as well i really hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you the confidence to try something similar there are links to all the products i use in the description so check them out thanks for watching i'll see you next time